the Philippines. Here, the sea structures the way of life. Just below the surface, some of the world's most iconic marine species spend their lives in the shallows. But there is also darkness here. Even the shallowest seas face deeper problems. Lying in between the Indian and Pacific Oceans, the Philippines host around 25,000 square kilometers of coral reef. Famous for being rich in marine life, this whole area is known as the Coral Triangle. But it is no longer thriving. Disease. More common on the reef than ever before, these corals are dead. It's a global issue, adding stress to habitats that are already vulnerable. In the Philippines, fishing methods are infamously destructive. It's an ominous outlook. But not all alien landscapes are so foreboding. Sea anemones might not look like it, but they are animals. Neither plants nor coral, they are most well known for providing a home to clownfish. Yet there is a huge range of anemone species in the shallows. hosting some less recognizable fish species. Pink anemone fish patrol around looking for food, never leaving the security of their own home. For saddleback anemone fish, even an exposed home will deter potential predators. Millions of stinging cells are embedded in each tentacle. Only minute crustaceans, like this yellow spotted shrimp, live here too. To avoid being stung, the fish coat themselves in a mucus produced by the anemone. This fools the anemone into accepting the fish as a part of its own mass. Hundreds of tentacles usually belong to just one animal. But in rare cases, anemones settle together, forming huge colonies. Great numbers of tomato anemone fish live in this one anemone city. Nearby, there are colonies of animals that belong to the same family as anemones, the cnidarians. These are called polyps, and they live within the coral's framework. Under a microscope, it's possible to actually see the tiny cells living inside its tissue. They are found in anemone tissue too. The tiny cells are microscopic plants called zooxanthellae. These minute cells are vital to a great proportion of the reef. Even within an cnidarian's tissue, 
they can still use sunlight for photosynthesis, producing food and energy for their host. Other animals, like this giant clam, host them too. In the shallows, anemones obtain zooxanthellae from the plankton that they feed upon. It's a partnership that benefits from the direct sunlight filtering through these waters, boosting the cell's productivity. For many, island vegetation is as synonymous with life in the tropics as beaches and coral reefs. But anemones and plants have a further connection. It's something that occurs because shallow reefs often hug the shoreline. Leaf litter on the beach is washed out to sea. As they drift further away from the shore, the leaves provide a surprising lifeline to young anemone fish. They are the perfect indicator that a shallow reef is nearby. Incredibly, from right out in the blue, tiny anemone fish can follow a chemical trail left in the wake of the leaves, bringing them right back to the safety of the reef. But scientists have discovered a problem. In acidic conditions, young anemone fish, like this, are developing with hearing deformities. Unable to hear, the fish become increasingly vulnerable to predators. Sound is a crucial way of detecting approaching predators. If they don't retreat into their anemone, the fish are not protected at all. All the species here are in danger. The partnership between anemones and clownfish ought to keep them safe together. But with change happening so fast, life here is struggling. The shallows are our most accessible viewpoint to life in our oceans. We need to keep an eye on the very deepest problems they face to ensure their resilience can remain. <laughs>